welcome everyone to a Scouts of Entertainment Napoleon Total War 3 4v4 today. Today's free play was sent to me by Miguel. I don't know his gaming name, so I'm not sure what team he's on. I'm guessing he's on um, Sweden. But in any case, the attackers today are Kronk de Bonk, Kappa S67, Obi Wan 1197, and Tex. On the defending team, we have Kevin, H, don't hate mate, and ONN. And today's battle takes place on Finland 2 map. And so we have Sweden in front of us. We'll go over the um, units in those armies in a second. We have Russia 1812, United Kingdom Peninsula, and Austria 1809, I believe. So I'll just have a quick look at the units for you. We got some Shivagurs, some Hussars. Or Chev more Chevs, Hussars, and Chevs, okay. The kind of infantry we got is Musketeers. A few units of Musketeers, a lot of Musketeers actually. It's variations. We have some 8 pounders here, two, one, sorry, one set of two 8 pounders and a 3 set of 12 pounders. And General is right there. Okay, we have two of the red team players in the center. Now, unfortunately, Rossi's units aren't as easy as the Musketeers. Okay, we have 2nd Coldstream Foot Guards. This is going to be easy. Uh, 14th Cambridge East. Sorry, 9th East. 53rd Shropshire. Some Brunswick Jaegers. King German Legion. 10th Hussars. General Burt. 18th Hussars. And Bruns more Brunswick Hussars, we saw them earlier. Okay, they deployed their artillery. It's a uh, two six pounder here, two six pounder crew. We have France, 1796 to 1800, Italiale. Looks to be, yeah, it's the same army there, I believe. That's Rossi's unit, so he's got a, it must, might be a guerrilla, or he's a cavalry unit he deployed. Yeah, it's a guerrilla unit. Okay, we have France, 1807 to 1800. 14, Spain, and that's what I can really see there at the moment. Oh no, we've got a Polska Force, that's just appeared. Okay, the rest of the units are invisible. We'll do a small cut here guys and come back once the combat begins, and we identify the remaining factions. Okay guys, we're back briefly, because we've got the final player, it's uh, France Garde Imperiale player. He's got some um, 3 set of 12 pounders here. He's got 3 Sorry, but we've got six 12 pounder cannons, uh, two different crews. Now, Imperial player players facing off against Sweden. He's also got Rossia to his back. It looks like we've got France, Italiale trying to come in to maybe support this little choke point here to make sure that this player doesn't get outflanked by Rossia or Great Britain. Great Britain is moving forward. And Rossi is moving forward too, but at a little bit of a slower pace than him. He did deploy further back, of course, that is why. So the real question is, what will France do here? Will he just turn to engage? Will he try to push to link up with his ally and maybe hold this choke point here so the red team can't attack the blue team in the rear while Sweden presses him from the front? It also doesn't discount the fact that the blue team might have a lot of cav forces heading this way, we don't know. If he does, then there could be some issues there for Sweden. He doesn't, have lot, he doesn't have a lot of cav himself. This is all he has, he's got about maybe four units total. His artillery crews are a long ways off actually, they're not even moving forward at the moment. Well, he's 8 pounder he is, but his 12 pounder is way behind. He needs to get it up here, pronto. You're shooting. Now this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it looks like Rossi and Great Britain will have to go behind the house to engage France. Well, France Italiale over here. Just use this hill as protection from the artillery here. Him trying to attack the back of Garda Imperiale could be some problems could have great difficulty. 
The slope of the hill favours the artillery. Yeah, this will be a killing zone if Russia comes this way. The skirmishes here aren't faring too well. There was artillery here, but it's not. They're actually trying to target. France's artillery, they killed two crew members, but they're a little bit ways off from breaking that crew and forcing them back. Wow, that was a good shot. There's no artillery behind them. The real question is. Sweden could maybe get around. If there's no forces here. Maybe Sweden could get some, could get all their cav in and charge and destroy this artillery position. If they can take this position out, then Rossi and Sweden can actually attack French play here and essentially crush them. Sweden has one force up there, maybe as a scouting party, just to detect any future enemies that might come their way. It's a good idea. Sweden's coming, but he's still a ways off. Uh, I think Rossi and England need his help to take out this artillery here. Good shot from the artillery crew. Taking out almost 20 men. I think this could be the only artillery England has. Taking out one more man there. That France artillery is proving to be more accurate against these guys. Okay, Ross is bringing up his 12 pounders. Okay, we got this French player sending out reinforcements to help out the Italian player. Yeah, that, that building is a lifesaver. It's really protecting the line here. This English player knows exactly what he's doing. He's lined it up perfectly with the house. Artillery is causing Russia no end of problems. Sweden's really got to get in here. You know, with, with all the artillery facing the, in the other direction, it would take time for them to swerve around. If Sweden moved in hard and fast, he could theoretically have won the position and smash through. With no artillery support, that would just help Sweden's cause. I admit it's a gamble, but you know. These allies are being hammered right now. They're only being saved here by this house, and it's actually being destroyed quickly. Already at 32% damage. Austria's a ways off from any engagement at the moment. France moving up very aggressively in support of their ally. Let's go and do a quick check casualty report. Only one there. Three there. Very minimal casualties across the board. Nothing that really catches my eye. These guys have just come across. These Rossi troops are just staying in reserve. 59. Absolutely smashed through. Jeez, the red team will have to abandon it in a second. I don't think this house is going to stand for much longer. And when it goes, I wonder if this line will be exposed to the artillery after that. It'll be interesting. Yeah, England report first. Okay, 10 there. Almost 20 there. England suffered a few losses there on their right flank. Okay.
Rossi is going to find no safe harbour there. So we've got some Sweden scouts there, trying to fire on the French front line. Or the Garda Imperial there line. Or the Imperial line. We'll go with Imperials. I think someone in the comment section mentioned that before. Just call them Imperials. So maybe I will do that. Under the cloud cover there. And this is where the action is for the moment. Now, didn't Rossi move up an artillery crew before? Oh, yeah, they started firing. Jeez, not like a miss. If they fire, they could easily kill their own troops. Or well, the troops of their allies. I mean, if they're gonna shoot at all, those three units, those three French units to the left, are really the only presentable targets. It's too great of a friendly fire risk to shoot this direction. We only had a reserve unit to bring up soon, this unit's about to break for sure. Yep, there it goes. Where's that? Oh yeah, it was Sweden's guerrilla force. Attacked by Polska, so Polska's on the march. He's heading this way. That was Sweden's alert. Now he's gonna move fast, he's gonna make a decision here. Press forward and try to attack and wipe out France before Polska arrives. Or withdraw and march around the other side to his allies, but it's a long march. Or stay here and hope for the best. Try to fight off any Polska reinforcements that might come his way. It's a bit of a gamble. And this isn't as bad as it looks here. These four French units, you only got like a, the first two ranks at least firing. So that's not a lot of fire coming their way. The house is destroyed yet. Oh no, they stopped firing at the house. Or not. <laughs> nope, they're still firing at it. Okay, looking at the target. Also, you see it down here, copped it a little bit. Let's take a quick look and see whether or not the artillery. Goes ahead. Oh yeah, there it does. Just clip the top of one person's head there, I think. Oh yeah, my bad too. There's um, there's two four pointers on this map. Uh, there's about five one pointers. I think I'm actually covering. Yeah, I think it's two two pointers on the field in the center. Okay. So there's 10 points there, 14, I think the total is 17 points up for grabs on this map. Ninety-five. We've got 28 men still inside there. We gotta get those troops out or they're done. Are they just hoping for the best, or what? Ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. This house gone, there's two valuable points taken from it. And most of the points 
therefore will be up to the north in blue team controlled territory. It's just like this artillery crew firing. So the French line here is looking pretty strong. English centre just broke. We got looks like we got one Rossier unit coming up to reinforce the centre. Good for Rossier for backing up his ally there in the centre. Looks like Rossier's pulling more troops there to the right. Is, it looks like the the red team has enough troops here to overwhelm the left flank of their enemy. They've got plenty of cavs standing by. Polska has some cav forces here, but not too many. I mean, the only real risk, of course, is that bloody artillery. I'm sure it's frustrating the hell out of the red team. They're really banking on Sweden, I think, to destroy it. But Sweden is still not pressing forward yet. Don't know what he's waiting for. You shouldn't expect any help from his team until he, because they can't get to it. They gotta, they gotta go way too far around. I'm not sure why we're sending a battle there for that house, but anyway. Alright, so France is taking more casualties at the moment. England's left flank faring a little bit better. I think that's mainly due to the Rossi artillery support that's really helping them out over here. Now both teams' lines are holding, but the morale's looking a little bit better on the French side. I'll tell you what, with that artillery covering. There's French troops and Polska's troops, and there goes the house, and there goes the protection. Now, I don't know if cannibals can pass through a destroyed house, or if they'll just fly right over it. And they buried any troops inside there. That hill, if that's, a, if that's a real hill hill and it's solid, then the troops here should be relatively safe. Austria's facing off here, but the Spanish French troops. I was gonna say France Espanada, France, yeah, France Espanada, France Spain. I, I don't know how you say it. When I say I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly how to say it. You know, is this sort of uh, Spanish French or French Spanish? Maybe it's France like in 1807. I'll just settle on that, I think. Okay, so five pounders here, three of them. So France 1807 being not too aggressive. Well, I see a couple of Polska troops here. Not really sure where the rest of his army is. Okay, looks like France Imperials are on the move. These Rossi troops here really clumped up. I'm curious to see whether they're going for a bayonet charge or they try to line up somewhere and shoot. I mean, they've got this courtyard here, but they can possibly shot into the back of the troops down here. Even now, they probably can shoot at them, but there's no troops here at the end of the street. Actually, not a bad idea. Polish should probably move off one this unit here so he can just shoot directly into these 
Polsky, so did Rossi again, it's right here. You've got the house's protection. Trips here relatively bunched up, it's a, it seems to be a pretty fair fight. So I think that's a missed opportunity there for Polska. Okay. So that reinforcements are almost needed here. They're trying to shorten their line, condense it a little bit to fit more troops in. This unit needs to spread out a little bit more to be more effective, get more rifles firing. Those two units they're trying to accommodate. Looks like Austria is getting pretty close here. France 1807. And this unit here has been hammered. The round's not too good. And this could be why. We've got three, so two 10 pounders. And we just have some skirmishes there back in the month. Just in case. That artillery is certainly helping things. And this water, I bet, makes things a little bit difficult to move through. Austria certainly does a Certainly appears to have the high ground here over France 1807. And their artillery, those 10 pounders are positioned nicely. So it looks like that 5 pounder crew is gone somewhere. It might have even been destroyed, I'm not sure. Yeah, the crew's been gone. Looks like some cab got into them. Okay, France is moving up. Can Austria go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? It's never really worked out well for Austria in the past. Here we go. Salvo go. Oh, hang on. Okay, I thought someone had bayonet charge over here. Minor casualties. No real surprise if this is the first real engagement they're having. Okay, this crew's down heavily depleted, mainly because of the artillery. Minor casualties everywhere else across the line, it would seem. Okay, let's head back. That's where the main battle's at. So like Polska does have some forces coming in. Sweden's ready for him. But Sweden isn't pressing up on any front just yet. He's still holding back for some reason. Well, what have we got here? We've got a, a big push here. This is a huge gamble. What is Rossia thinking? The French line here was looking pretty weak and pretty thin. They got off a nice volley. And we have a French cap coming in. Some Cavalier. Cavalier. Looks like we have some Rossier cab movement back in the map. Elite cab, heavy hitters. Kirasuri. Yeah, elite and heavy cab moving in. polska has got cab back here, but I'm not sure what he, how he plans to use them. And he's charging him in now. This is a big gamble. It appears to be paying off. We've got, oh no, we've got Polska Cab coming in. 
Prince kept moving in behind them. Rossi's committed a lot of resources here to this push. I'm surprised not seeing him being backed up by English Cap, but English Cap is sitting back there not doing too much. Infantry as well. Rossi is moving in, moving in his depleted forces, so Rossi is going for broke here. He's going all in. It's an aggressive maneuver that it appears to be paying off. He is rolling up his enemy and he's driving them back. At a certain point, though, he's got to hold his position. He's got to fall back. This tree line is probably a good indicator of where to stop. Mainly because of those French artillery positions. Now we've got this Rossi unit here that can turn around and fire into this French unit. Sure plane. Well, this is the only target in the area. These guys here are shooting at them. Oh, he's just going to turn bayonet charge into it. Alright, they broke. Oh, Sweden charged in some cab himself. Okay, so he, he braved it. Yeah, and that's exactly what you expect to happen. Our men are running, sir. Oh, the Sweden did do its job. It did break the French cab. You now have to move around any enemy cab here that can attack the Polska and French position from the rear, while the infantry takes them on from the front. We've got English moving forward, but there's only a couple of units up there. We've got the French general here from Italy. He's boosting the morale of his troops. I don't think Rossi can push too much further without heavy support. I mean, he's only got a couple of units here, and they're being shot at as we speak. The cab moves in, it would help things. This building has fallen to the enemy. But at what point do the French and Polska, France and Polska, just cut their losses and fall back? I mean, there's still a number of troops here in each unit. They're still looking moderately healthy. And, you know, why isn't there an English or additional Rossi infantry just moving through the town here to attack Polska from the side? So still a very strong defensive position for France. The red team will have a tough time trying to get through here. We have killed their general, sir. Now Ooh. they must break. Was that, uh, was that the uh, Italy French Italy general? I think it was. Yes, it was. He's been sent on his way. Polska in trouble. I think the French Imperials will struggle to get back across the little pass here in time. Their only option might be to retreat. We've got two English units pursuing them, and Cap pursuing them as well. These units, all three of them can or do appear to be able to form square. But if they get harassed by that Rossier Cav, then those English units will catch up with them. But the question is, will Rossi move to try and cut them off? If they do, how badly will they be killed by the artillery? And we'll come back to that briefly, we'll see how this battle is going. Yeah, what a cap here! That can't be right. 
it was France 840, so 184 to add 199 troops. I don't know if that means they're broken or running away or what. Austria's doing all right here for now. Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack! The artillery's still going. His army's still looking pretty healthy. As is France. They're still doing pretty well themselves. They've got a lot of cab at their back. This swamp does favor Austria, I think. Okay, so England has moved up here, but. Um, some cab units here, but if he's going to take this building, I think maybe he just have to charge them in and try and just overwhelm the French unit there that's holding it. Okay, Sweden's engaged Oscar's forces. And we have 26 minutes, or some 27 minutes, to see a winner emerge. Oscar's charging in their cab. It's been fired upon. So they broke their right flank. Sars moving in. Sweden's losing this one. He's pulling back. Might be able to salvage that unit, but the good news for Sweden is he did break all of Polska's cab at the same time. So it'll take Polska some time to get down here. Alright, so Sweden's starting to engage the French Imperials. Now what's going on here? They were too aggressive in their advance, so they left themselves too exposed. I don't know if that's England's artillery. Looks like they try to halt their advance, but they break. Okay, so Rossi is just still deciding what they're doing. We're still moving forward to try and help the English player out. Francis right flank's not looking too healthy. How many 
a good idea for Austria to press in a little bit. Austria's got the guns, he's got the numbers. Okay, so it looks like Austria will be forced to move forward very soon. Not following France just yet. Okay, the rest of the forces are withdrawing. Alright, England is challenging France. Cavalry tried to move in, but most of the soldiers are already inside the house. It's a little bit too late for them. Yeah, France didn't have a lot of troops in here, it seemed. And England took it relatively easily. That's his force is in danger of breaking. Looks like Sweden is just pressing against France. He's actually forced them back a lot and broken up a lot of their army. The artillery crew has been wiped out. With relative ease, there's only a few horses there I'm seeing. Yeah, that artillery was the only thing holding back its enemies. It's like cage diving. Cage is being removed, the sharks are coming in. Now fortunately for this French player, Rossi and England have relatively retreated from this position. Well not retreated but advanced away from it. And so it's open up an escape route for the French Imperials to try and try and get through, but I think they'll struggle to actually make it. In fact, they won't get there. Sweden has them, dead to rights. They're gone. Fighting pretty well, but they just collapsed all of a sudden. They were vastly outnumbered after all, so probably why. And now the red team is advancing north. To what end? I don't know. There's nothing here. There's a couple of points. There might be some blue troops hiding in that house over there. It is a four pointer. But Austria is advancing across the swamp. Rando making a little bit slow going there for the arm. Looks like the Austrian artillery took out one of the horse crews. Ok, 
Okay, so some Jäger Schutzen. Try and take out or snipe out the artillery. Okay, Austria choosing to get in closer. We do have some friendly forces to the north heading this direction. But it'll be a while before they're able to get here. 17 and 40 minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Lost over 100 men. The other ones have suffered casualties, but not as bad. About half there. Yeah. The Austrian artillery really helping things along, I believe. Twenty-eighth foot, the slashes. Firing at some chasseurs. England appears to be winning this fight. Thirty-seven to forty-eight. France moving forward. Okay, they're broken. They might have been out of ammunition, I'm not sure. But they're going in for a bayonet charge. That I am sure. Okay, so we see some dragoons charging in. We have some Levelt backing up the infantry. And Rossia has some, um, how do you say this, Ulini Tuskarov. We do have some Shishos charging in, they're being blasted off their horses, or at least a couple of them. Enforcements here, and our generals just nearby to try and keep morale up. Austria's in a bit of strife here. Russia's coming in with some support. United Kingdom also has some dragoons here as well. Gonna try. Now they're in melee combat again. There's England in the distance, they can't get here fast enough.
Yeah, Rossi and Calf trying to move through the swamp. Obviously very slow for him. Here are about to break. Now, also, just says four infantry units over here. Looks like two have reformed. appears to be on his last legs. So you gotta credit this this France 1807 guy. He he knew what he was doing. Even when it looked like he was facing defeat, he turned that battle completely around. I thought Austria really had him on the ropes there. French player's plan is probably to try and move through the swamp towards Austria, defeat him, and then use the swamp's terrain to defend himself against the English player coming at his rear. Maybe a couple of units to delay them, it would seem. We got There's some trailers, and we have a Ron Rossi unit, some uh, Picotta. So they were pursuing, I don't know if they're pursuing them, looks like they look like they were. Oh, they took out two of them there, good for them. That range. We got 12 pandas here that could be frying on That's a long way. Probably should turn their attention to this unit here and try and break it. Okay, as we come down to the business end, they are looking to take out... Sorry, they are looking to get some points. So right now it is 6 to a potential 7 on the blue team. A lot of broken troops from the French side falling back this way. And this French unit here could be going after the English cab. They're charging in. I say English cab, probably English artillery. English player is trying to lumber up his artillery. Ross is moving in behind him. Okay, we've got one artillery left alive. Cruise down to six. Oh, they broke. This is they're about to fire. 
Now they actually can form square. There they go. One blue team member all the way to the east there on the map. These guys here end up the Jesus going out. Not faring too well here against the English player. Cavalry worked well here for the French, but a lot of the English units here can form a square. And every time he tries to advance, the English manages to drive him back. Austria fire. In a good position. Okay, last of the French forces here on our floor were broken. And there's one still fighting. Artillery. All isolated and alone. And what's happening over here? What we got? We have the Swedish general and one French imperial unit. We also have Sweden artillery. Three minutes fifty five seconds to go. Now, I'll see Chasing as well. I didn't see him before. I've seen him, but I did see him before. It's going to be quickly. I think that could be it there. Victory! Okay, so congratulations to Kevin who got 1,044 kills. H, 1,187. Don't Hate Me got 1,280. And On, or O-N-N, -N, got 1,156. Kronk de Bonk, 1,090. Kappa, for, Kappa S67, 1,555. Obi-Wan 1197, 684. And Tex, on 603. Okay, looking for standout performances. The Musketeers, the, the Assess Michelle, I think maybe. 143 and 131. Musketeers, Prince Clemens, 109. And it appears to be that. Okay. So thank you to Miguel for sending me in the replay. Congratulations to Kevin and his team on their victory. This is Scouts of Entertainment signing off. Catch you guys in the next one.